we have already had very interesting discussions and presentations in the beginning about how organizations um, have a hard time adjusting to changes in project management. And we have project high value, which is exactly a project that asks experts, project management experts in the automotive industry about how would be the future of project management if you have no organizational limits? What would be the perfect state? And as you can see, this is a collection of Porsche, which should be familiar to everyone. We have Drexelmeyer and Honasco, which are suppliers of Porsche, so they have a real world connection. We also have the Collaboration Factory, which is a provider for project management software for all three of the companies involved in our project. So we have not only a theoretical, but also a real connection between everyone. They knew each other, and they are naturally very familiar with the project management in the automotive industry. And to support this from a science perspective, we have the University of Applied Sciences Landshut, and also the Institute for Social Research, ISF, Institute for Soziale Forschung, in Munich. And together we ask the question, how would project management in the automotive industry look without restraint, without uh, uh, any organizational constraints? So, naturally, I have to say it was financed <laughs> uh, from the Federal Ministry of Education and Research and the European Social Funds under the Future of Work program. So, first of all, who are we at um, the University of Applied Sciences in Landshut. Our partners will introduce themselves in the next presentations, but our focus is mainly, as you have already guessed, on project management, research, transfer, education, and training. And as you can see, our domains are business process modeling, project engineering, project management, and platforms and services. Also, we have a second uh, section with energy, medical engineering, and mobility. And naturally, our competences are data science, AI, machine learning, Internet of Things, algorithms, and adaptive reference modeling. I don't uh, have everything here uh, in my repertoire, but our institute as a whole uh, covers all these topics. So, what is the current situation in the automotive industry? When you develop a new car, you always have an original manufacturer here on top, and he starts his process. Project, product definition, product concept, development, prototype, pre-production, start of line. At first, it looks like a very sequential and easy process, but during this process, at some point, mostly when the product definition is finished and the product concept is in an advanced stage, the OEM will go one step further and ask suppliers to deliver modules components. This could be a seat, could be something from interior, different parts. And then you have a product, uh, you have a development process within the first development process. And you don't only have it one time, you have it three, four, five, six, multiple times, as you have more than one supplier usually. So now, the same process repeats. They get a product definition, so we'll do a product concept. And at some point, the first tier supplier will see, OK, we will need different parts from our suppliers. So for example, I'm producing a seed. Now I have the head of the seed will, produced, will be produced by someone else. And say again, start a development process in a second tier supplier. And then you get this reversed pyramid structure, which is, which is almost like a funnel in the end. And you see you always have less and less time because you start the development process later because uh, someone already needed time to finish their work. If they are finished, the next one starts. But in order for the product to succeed, because you can't finish the seed without a head, you have to finish faster. So you start later and finish faster. Um, the more down you go in this funnel, which may be a problem, as the deeper you go, the less time you have for your product development and to finish it. 
And you all may be familiar with this curve we see here in green. If the process goes on, it is much, much more costly to uh, redeem errors, which can be a problem, especially if you have to go back, you see, okay, our first year supplier made a pro uh, had a problem with this product concept, which affects the maybe already finished product development task uh, from the second tier supplier. So it gets enormously costly, enormously fast. So what did we do in our project? We first needed to understand the automotive development process. For this, we have developed three different process models, how each of our partners in the industry, Porsche, Honasco, and Drexelmeyer, uh, described as their process. And we constructed a BPMN, business, product and business process model and notation uh, document, which is IT compatible. We can use it to work with it on a computer side. And for this, we searched about 100 documentation, uh, documents and no, these are not one pages. So this usually have 50 to 100 pages each. So it was quite something to read. And we have seen that the, the main parts in the development process are still handled with quality gates. We heard about them shortly in the first presentation today. And we have seen the OEM uses 14 quality gates. The first tier uses eight quality gates and the third tier uses set only seven quality gates, which makes a combined total of 29 quality gates in each process. And as a result, we had over 1,000 process tasks in our BPMN models, and we had 150 relevant documents which were used or referenced and of significant importance during the whole process, during the whole development process. Uh, to make sure we got the process right, we also had intensive interviews and video calls with our partners from the industry. In total, 12 video calls, 25 hours, only talking about the process model and if it is correct or there are, if changes are needed. And yes, we needed 168 changes during these interviews and only 31 changes to relevant documents. So, we found some challenges. Process variance and language was one big topic. Our project management experts in the industry said uh, we had to tackle. Cause uh, each OEM, each car manufacturer, uses a different language than other car manufacturers. One term, which uh, for example is uh, T1 status, which means that you have reached a certain point in the development process, is different between BMW, Porsche, and VW, which can be quite complicated if you're a newbie in this process like I was some time ago. It causes misunderstandings, as all suppliers usually supply not only one OEM, but multiple. And sometimes even changing definitions when one group occurs. So for example, Porsche is currently still struggling to define some project management uh, terms, even within the company. Different wings of the company use the same words to, descri uh, to describe different things, or mean different things, if they say it. So there is no, usually no industry-wide standards, and there's a need for some kind of translation table. So our project management expert in the automotive industry said, we would really like a list of common uh, words used, of abbreviations also, which is recognized within at least a company, preferably with the whole industry. So we sat down and asked our experts, what do you know for short uh, abbreviations? What do you know for terms? Uh, about all your OEMs, all your customers, all your suppliers, and we got a long list and compiled everything together uh, so that we can say, okay, if this arises and it's this, um, this OEM, it has this meaning. And you have one unified place to look where is a description for each word which may be used in the project management context. 
So, the solution was also to create on the left side, we see we have textual descri uh, descriptions of the processes, but we had no visualization. It was very complex to understand the, the, the automotive uh, process and you may not be able to read it, but you, but you can surely see we have the yellow side, for example, which is only textual, and it naturally is harder to read than the right side, where you have, okay, you have step one, and I see, okay, I can go to step two. It's much more processable. And we have identified that the main problems are the information flow, and the information retention, so how can I keep information? What information is relevant and needs to be passed on? What information is purely for an internal use and should not be passed on to others? And when is information flow even necessary? And how can information flow be realized in a more common way with suitable granularity? So, we had to find some common synchronization points. When is data between an OEM and a supplier exchanged, when is the need for communication and what must be communicated. In the second presentation we will hear more about how do I communicate right and how do I get my information across. But the first step was even to realize when do I communicate. So we had some workshops, <laughs> took some long nights and intensive work and came up with a little software tool. The software tool was realized by CPlace, which is a uh, subdivision of the collaboration factory, which already provided project management software for the OEMs. And yeah, as our project was going on, crisis hit hard, you know, uh, we started with Corona, which was uh, a shock for the automotive industry as the plants in China shut down, less and less supply came in. The rest of the world started shutting down too, even less supply came in. And when everything came together, we had the Evergreen, which decided, okay, I will make a 180 degree uh, turn in the Suez Canal and block all passage for, I think, a few weeks. So, even less supply came in, and now we have a problem. The first, uh, or the one in the lowest tier, recognizes I have a problem, I cannot get my parts in time. How can I solve this? He tries to solve this problem, finds no solution because there frankly was no one at the time, and then he reports it one level above and tells, okay, uh, now it's the first tier who has to decide, can I compensate? He takes one week to decide, no, I have once again a problem, and now I must report this problem back to the OEM and the OEM says, oh, if you had told me this some weeks before, now we have officially said we will launch the new model in a week. Now we can cancel it. If you had known this information that we had problems in the third tier development process early on, I could have helped and uh, maybe changed a few timings or more easily uh, compensated the error. So what is our goal in project high value? We want to reduce this funnel I uh, showed you at the beginning. We have here uh, two different time delays. We have, as you can see, a delta time, T1, on the right side, which is a delay between the product development process on Honasco, Drexelmeyer, and Porsche. There's a difference. When Porsche wants to finish, they still need to calculate time that uh, Honasco, as he starts later, will need. And we have T2, a possible time gain. If we succeed, that information flow happens faster, that the product development process at Honasco can start earlier, uh, the whole process is shifted to the left. We can finish faster because we started earlier. And everyone has a much more uh, easy time to finish the project because you have less time constraints in the lower levels. This was even supported uh, on the top level by Porsche. They said, okay, we want more information flow and we want to integrate you faster so that we get more information from you and uh, we all have a better time. 
uh, finishing this project. So, what is the solution? There's some information which is company intern, and there's some information which should be shared between partners. So we want to move away from this pyramid where one <laughs> is a supplier of another and everyone is dependent on each other, but there's no communication between uh, the different tiers. So instead we want one shared pool of information. What do we need to sh share this information? We need transfer plans, um, which says, okay, we have different timing schedules and everybody must know the timing schedules of everybody else involved and they must be interconnected so if one happens to be later, we will clearly see which other parts of schedules from partners are affected. We will need a shared cloud environment to make this happen because not everyone is working on premise and we have to collaborate the workflows and milestone to track the progress of every partner involved. So, at the end, we want to arrive at a very simple dashboard where we can say, okay, are we on time or do we have problems? And we have this simple ample mechanism where we see, okay, we have a red light and everything it goes downhill. We have to do something. We have a green light, everything is okay. And we have a yellow light that says, okay, we are still in time, but we are losing time. We should maybe optimize or see what we can do. To realize this, we have developed the C-Place Automotive Cloud in two levels. We have one level, which is really a shared pool of information where every partner can see, okay, that's the general plan. They are interconnected, so if a uh, uh, delay happens in a lower level, I immediately have the information on the OEM side. And we still have this level one, as you can see at the top, where we have company internal information. We only have this synchronization points where information is shared and how much progress we have made to the synchronization point. But how this process, pro uh, progress was achieved still stays company internal. I cannot see, okay, you have finished your uh, step one and step two, but step three is still, miss is still missing. Now I see only the process is finished for 30 or 40 percent because there's still some information which the project manager won't share in between. That's also something they all agreed on. So, we have um, here a little description on how it works. You see we have different schedules, we have different tools for tracking the progress. Here we use a Kanban board. You see we have uh, three tasks. One is completed, one is in review for completion, and one is still to be done. And we can see this translate on the right side to a dashboard for the management. Okay, the Lieferantenbeauftragung, um, supplier, <laughs> Um, is still finished 66%. So we have to uh, still make some progress, but it's still uh, but it's behind schedule as it is still red. So we have to do something. Something is not right. Maybe the first task should have finished faster or something like this. So that was a very short overview about what is our project about and how we could support it technically. Um, if you want, you can ask some questions about this part of the presentation and we will also do an open discussion at the end. So, are there any questions from your side so far in the first presentation? Okay. Yes, Robert. So, what is now the uh, uh, current uh, how you say that, uh, appreciation of this tool being available and being used. What's the, the first um, judgment call? Um, the f uh, so the first judgment we had was when Robert presented it in the C-Place showcase earlier this year. It received very good feedback because it was something that was constructed by project management experts for project management experts. Um, but the downside is, like I told you, or like I told everyone before, um, 
it's a very good tool. It needs time to get market um, readiness, but it will be very hard to bring it on the way organizationally because you have to have 20 or 30 people signing off on it and new things scare executives <laughs> is the first feedback we got. So it's, it's rather a wish, a utopia if you want so, but uh, we will see if we can realize it. I'm a little bit doubtful. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, further questions? Okay, I don't see any, so we may switch to the next part about communication in the process. Thank you. Thank you.